Oh yeah, look at that. I think it'll go good. I think it's, I think it's sliced up pretty well. Well, I'm back in my kitchen, Amy Roloff, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, so thanks for joining me. Anyway, um, I am going to make meatloaf. I was in the mood for meatloaf. Just to give you guys a little idea, I usually do not plan what I'm going to make the next day or the week or whatever like that. I'll usually think about it during the weekend. What kind of things do I think I'm go I want to make? Sometimes I change it up, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do it just to give me an idea, just to get my brain going and thinking and whatever whatever else it may do. But I am often, I, I not I am, I often cook, not on the fly, but what mood I'm in. And I was thinking that Zachary and Tori were gonna come over for dinner, they're not. So I asked Chris, well, do you still wanna have meatloaf? mashed potatoes and gravy and maybe green beans again. I don't know. Maybe I'll do zucchini and carrots. Who knows? So it just felt comforting. Um, it's in the winter and I just felt like meatloaf. Meatloaf is one of those things that you can add whatever you want to it and I'm sure it will taste great. Even if you just did the basics, you got good uh, ground beef, salt and pepper, um, an egg or two, depending on how much meat you have here, because that'll be your binding uh, that, you know, kind of molds the meat together. Uh, maybe a little bit of seasonings like garlic powder, Italian, and possibly a little bit of breadcrumbs and a little bit of milk just to soak that up a little bit. I think sometimes when you just add breadcrumbs, it'll have a tendency to dry out the meat and not have this nice, moist, sliceable meatloaf. That is great the next day or the next day after that. I remember growing up with meatloaf sandwiches. We loved it when my mom made meatloaf. We'd have the mashed potatoes or roasted potatoes, whatever it may be, some vegetable, and we always had dessert. If it wasn't dessert, we always had a little bit of ice cream. My dad always wanted a little bit of ice cream. But I think most of my sisters and brother and I, we loved meatloaf sandwiches. Uh, we take it to lunch to school one day, or you know, to school, and then all our friends would be asking us, what in the world are you eating? <clears throat> meatloaf sandwich. I don't know, it is great. Meatloaf with a little bit of ketchup and mayo and lettuce. Anyway, I'm on a tangent right now. Meatloaf, you can really make it your own. You can make it simple or you can um, change it up and do other things. In fact, I was just online and I love Bobby Flay's uh, recipe for meatloaf. I haven't tried his exact recipe before, uh, but it sounded so good, like roasted vegetables in that. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're finely chopped but he still has an egg. He still has something to bind it together. Little breadcrumbs. I like soaking my breadcrumbs in with milk because I think it helps soften and tenderize and um, really make the meatloaf moist, but not too much where it falls apart. So anyway, this is, in fact, this is my today's make of meatloaf. I have never used exactly these ingredients before because usually I see what's in my refrigerator. I put green pepper with this. I've omitted red pepper. Um, and sometimes I don't put onions in it. Or sometimes I put Worcestershire, Worcestershire, oh my goodness, Worcestershire sauce. You know what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes I put like a ketchup glaze on top of the meatloaf. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use chili sauce. Oh my goodness. I tell you, meatloaf is all over the board. So. Let's just do what I'm doing. Sometimes I just use ground pork, but today, because I didn't get it, I have uh, two pounds of ground beef, good ground beef, and I only I decided just to use a half a pound of Italian sausage, mild Italian sausage. 
that'll give it some flavor, um, some spice to it. So I'm really not gonna add any Italian seasonings like thyme or oregano or any of that because I think the Italian sausage already has it in there. But I will um, add about a quarter cup of grated Parmesan. And then I have about a half a cup of breadcrumbs and I'm gonna put a little bit of milk in here and soak that a little bit. I've got, I have about, uh, what is this? A third cup of kind of like finely diced onions. I probably have about the same, a finely diced red pepper. And what I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna saute them just a little bit along with mashed up garlic so that the onions and the red pepper can have that flavor of the garlic in it and that'll slowly kind of filter through all of the meatloaf. And the reason I'm sauteing this, even though they're finely chopped, is because I want them still have a little bite to it, but I want them to soften up a little bit so that when you do eat, when you when you do slice the meatloaf, the onions are soft, the um, red pepper is soft, and you still don't get that bite. You don't still get that crunch because I don't think that's what meatloaf should do. So anyway, let's get started. Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen and we're making classic, old fashioned, how about retro meatloaf? I don't know, you put a name on it, let me know. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it and I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. Okay, before I saute the onions and the uh, red pepper, we are going to grate, depending on how large your garlic cloves are, probably about two or three. I'm kind of doing three of them. We're just gonna grate this a little bit. I don't have one of those devices. I don't know where it went, really, where you can mash your um, garlic. The one thing I gotta be careful here is that I have often grated my finger. <laughs> we don't want that. So I'm just gonna grate the garlic in here. So like I said, about three. And then if you have any garlic left over, just finally chop those up. They'll still work. And again, I'm gonna uh, saute these with the onions and the red pepper so that we don't get big chunks of garlic or any of that, and it'll be soft. Okay, I think I'm gonna chop up that garlic a little bit. Okay, one more. And then there we are, see? I'll just scrape that in here. Oh. I tell you people, I love garlic. Love it. This will put a nice flavor and aroma to it. Okay, let's go over to the stove and start sauteing a lot of this up. Okay, we're just gonna saute our red pepper here a little bit. And our onion. We don't want to saute them where they're really soft because you know this will still have this will go into the meatloaf and still have an hour depending on how much meat you have i'm gonna go at least an hour and 20 maybe an hour and a half and we got our little garlic mashed up garlic here where's my wooden spoon where did that thing go turn that up a little bit I just put just a little bit of olive oil in here. I didn't want a lot because, you know, onions and red pepper are already wet. I didn't want to make them that wet. But yeah, look at that. Oh, this is going to look nice in the meatloaf. I think this will add a lot of flavor.
little bit more. And even if you've got a couple of big pieces, you know, don't worry about that. It'll still be fine. But just try and dice up the red pepper and the onion as much as you can. I'm just going to add just a little bit of salt to this. Because I will not add that much salt to the meatloaf. Just because it's got the Italian sausage and I know that probably has some salt. And I think by sauteing your vegetables this way before you add it to the meatloaf, I mean, you don't have to do this. I like to do it because it also takes away a little bit of the rawness of the vegetable. It kind of brings out some other flavors to it. All right. We're almost there. Yeah, I think that's about it. So let's go back over to the counter and we'll start building our meatloaf. Okay, so we're going to start building our meatloaf. I'm going to try and use a fork, but you know what? Sometimes it is best just to get your hands in there. That way the sausage meat gets really combined. And I only, I have two pounds of ground beef and only a half a pound of sausage, uh, Italian sausage. It's kind of like mild. So I'm thinking I do not need a lot of salt or other Italian seasonings. I think the sausage may give me enough. That's what I'm hoping. And even though I might put kind of like a, um, like a ketchupy chili sauce glaze on the top of this meatloaf, this will still go great if you want to do a little bit of gravy if you're serving it with mashed potatoes. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. Well, I'm just going to combine all this anyway. We got two eggs. Going to add two eggs. Let's see. I'm going to add all my other stuff. Here are my onions, garlic, and red pepper. That way the egg stuff can only be over my hands one time. Then I'm going to add in the breadcrumbs soaked in a little bit of milk. I have about a half a cup of breadcrumbs with about a half a cup of milk. Obviously, breadcrumbs really soak up the milk. Okay, again, I'm gonna get my hands in there. Boy, if you really wanted to, I don't know, get some of your frustration out. <laughs> kind of blend in meatloaf. Get your hands in there and make friends with the food. But you know what, if you don't want, like I said, if you don't want to use Italian sausage with a little spice in it and just ground pork, that's fine too. I would go ahead and probably add at least a tablespoon of Italian uh, seasonings or maybe oregano or thyme, combination of both, half a teaspoon of both, uh, thyme and oregano. I think that'll give the meatloaf some really good flavor as well. Okay. Huh, let's see here. Do I have a, I'm gonna try and use my hand that hasn't been in the meat. You know what, I'm gonna use a little bit of smoked paprika, is that? Yeah. I think that'll give it a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of garlic. 
because I really like garlic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt, not too much, because like I said, I think that Italian seasoning will definitely have salt. And then a little bit of pepper. My fork, I'm gonna find a bigger fork. Get those seasonings mixed in. I gotta remember to, that I put all the ingredients that I was talking to you guys about. Okay, what else here? Oh yeah, my Worcestershire sauce. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm not gonna add the eggs directly in here. I'm gonna add them in this bowl. And then we're gonna mix in the egg, um, beat the eggs a little bit so that get well incorporated. And yes, I know this fork was already in the meatloaf, but the eggs are going in the meatloaf too, so I think it'll be fine. So you blend in the egg. Let's, um, let's punch down a hole in here. Get the egg in there. That was two eggs and I'll use my fork a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my hands. I know it feels a little soupy, but you know what? This is going to be good and moist. The meatloaf's not gonna be dried. That's why you really wanna make sure your egg is mixed in with the meat so that it has a chance to be incorporated throughout all of it and not just on the surface. All right. And to top this off, I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire How do you even say that? Rachel Ray had this whole thing on her show. I love her show. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Oh my goodness. I think I'm horrible with that. So I don't know. Just a little bit. Could be about a teaspoon. You don't want a lot. Just enough to add a little bit of flavor. Okay, I think that is done. I'm gonna go wash my hands so that we can load it in the loaf pan so I can have some fresh hands here. Okay, I just felt like I needed to wash my hands, guys. So um, one last thing I wanted to add into this because as I looked down at it, I thought it was onions and I thought I have plenty of onions, is maybe about a little less than a half a cup of grated Parmesan. See how I hesitated? I wanted to make sure I at least pronounced that right. So yeah, about a, I don't know, a third. This isn't necessary, just another opportunity to add some flavors, flavor and layers to your meatloaf. There we go. I was gonna use a spoon to do this, but I think I'm just gonna use my hands. Just get a big, some people can free, um, do this mold it free hand and just put it on parchment paper on a baking sheet. But I like putting it in a bread loaf pan. 
Probably should have got a bigger one for this. I'm hoping it doesn't overflow. And I did go ahead and grease my pan just a little bit, very lightly, because um, I definitely didn't want it to stick. Just gonna tap that a little bit, get some air out. Boy, man, I tell you, I kind of like being on this little stool here. And then I'm just gonna run just this little knife here along the sides so it has room to expand. There we go. So now let's put a little sauce on here. I'm just gonna do a light covering of chili sauce mixed in with a little Worcestershire sauce. So let's give that a try. Okay, let's, um, I don't know, you don't have to put a little, uh, like, a sauce on your meatloaf if you don't want. I'm going to, because I think it'll go great if you do end up making meatloaf sandwiches, like I grew up as, and I'm hoping that Chris and I will definitely have plenty of leftovers for this. Um, but I think it'll also do well, too, even if you do put a sauce over it, and you still want to do the old-fashioned mashed potatoes, make your gravy, and put a little gravy over the meatloaf too. So I just went ahead and got some really good store-bought chili sauce. I could have made this myself, but you know what? Sometimes things are just easier if you just buy it already done. Just go look for your favorite ones. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. And I like this chili sauce because it's not a really sweet one. Chris does not like sweet meat, like that honey glazed ham or pineapple on pizza. Absolutely a no-no in Chris's world. So I really like this uh, chili sauce because it's a little tart and um, so it's not so sweet. So I'm just gonna put that on here. One little row. We're just gonna smooth it out. I've got my oven preheated at 375. And this will take probably about an hour and a half. See, it's just slightly covered. So this meatloaf will probably take about an hour and a half to cook. And if you really wanna check it, you know, do your meat thermometer, make sure it's up to what, medium, well done especially depending on if you're using, um, if you're using like 90-10 or grounds, uh, well, sirloin definitely has some fat to it, but really lean meat. Um, you may not want to cook it. You don't want any red, but you don't want to overdo it because then you'll create a really dry meatloaf. So anyway, cook it for about an hour and a half until done. Because my little timer doesn't go for an hour and a half with the one that I have, I've got my eyeball on the clock. So this will be done, because it's about five o'clock my time, this will be done about 6.30. And so in the meantime, I'm gonna clean up this mess. And with uh, what I'm gonna serve with this meatloaf, I'm gonna do the old comfort kind of thing. I'm just gonna use, uh, I'm just gonna make garlic, mashed potatoes, and make a gravy so I'll create like a roux and add some really good beef broth or stock beef stock and that'll give some richness especially to the potatoes but if you want to go ahead or if anyone else wants to go ahead they can add a little bit of the gravy to the meatloaf as well so anyway see you back here in about an hour and a half and this is Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen be sure to catch all the recipes at amyroloffslittlekitchen.com or my YouTube channel and you can find all the recipes, downloads, printables, all of that other good stuff. And feel free to leave me a message on Instagram or social media. I will try and do my best to look at them, respond to as many as I can, because I'd really love to have some of your creative ideas in the kitchen or something you would like to see me make and bake. 
because I'm creating a list of all of that. So uh, one day I'm going to do a bunch of recipes from all of you. So I'll be back. Okay, the meatloaf is done and we are ready to eat. Look at how nice that looks. The topping and everything, just enough, just to give it a little extra more flavor. The big test, usually meatloaf is a lot better to cut the next day than when it's still warm and everything. So I am going to hope that this doesn't crumble on me but even if it does it's still good because I think I added enough so that the whole meatloaf will hold together so let's take a look okay let's slice this up Ooh, so far so good Hold it together there. Oh yeah, look at that. I think it'll go good. I think it's I think it's sliced up pretty well. And as I mentioned before. I grew up having meatloaf sandwiches the next day or the next day after that, or leftovers. So not, o not only am I looking forward to having this, you know, very home comforting, you know, going back in time kind of meal. I can't wait to have a meatloaf sandwich too. So this recipe and all of the other recipes you can find at amyroloffslittlekitchen.com and on my YouTube channel. So subscribe. Join me, connect with me on social media as well. So from my kitchen to yours, I hope you make it. I hope you enjoy it. And let me know what you think. 